So you may have just picked up your Lenovo Legion Go, and you might be trying to figure out exactly how to use it. Now, luckily for you, this is a very basic type of you know, console to use. I mean, there's a lot of cool capability to have here, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have an even better understanding on how to use this particular console. Now, number one, this is a very big and large gaming console. It has a lot of stuff going for it. You have your main display on the front. It's a very large display, 144 hertz, and this is a very good display when it comes down to it. I definitely do think this is probably one of its biggest assets because it's such a ginormous display. It's a very good looking display too, and you're having a pretty good experience with it when it comes down to it. Now it's rocking Windows 11 as well. You can probably install Linux on it if you want to, but it's rocking Windows 11 by default. Now you have your kind of your remote controllers, your controllers set up split in two. So most gaming handhelds nowadays do have these things split in two different sides. So you can see right here on the left side, we have this single controller. You have your buttons and everything, same thing on the right side. They do detach, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. On the bottom portion of this controller, you're basically getting a USB Type-C port. It's a single USB Type-C port right there, which is something that's actually really cool. So you have that type of capability right there. I thought that kind of took out. I think on the front side or on the top side, you basically have a lot more buttons. So your buttons at the top kind of, you know, change around a little bit. So you have your standard type of controller buttons, your left, right triggers. You have your volume button right up here, so you can put your volume up or down. You have a USB Type-C port, another one. So you have two of them here that allow you to go through and basically plug and play. So that right there is a really big advantage for this type of console as well. And you also have a micro SD card slot. So you can go through, plug in your micro SD card right there and expand your storage that way. You have these fans that basically bring in hot air, bring in cold air, take out hot air. So you have that type of advantage there too. You also have a headphone jack right there and you have your power button. So this little light that lights at the top, that is basically a little power button. Now on the back side, you don't really have too much of anything else super crazy going on. What's interesting is, is that these buttons on the sides of your controller here are different layout. So you can see right here, they have these buttons kind of side by side right here. With the right side, they're up and down. So I don't know why they decided to do that. I think that is kind of weird. I think they probably should have looked elsewhere. On the back side too, you also have this little compartment that you can take out and you can also go through and kind of mess around with it. I probably would not recommend it, but it's a little kickstand that basically allows you to kind of, you know, kind of kick this thing out and kind of play your games that way. So you do have a little kickstand back here. I think that's something that's really awesome to have here. And that right there kind of does make it that much more of like a, you know, premium console. I think that's a really cool thing they kind of threw in here. You also have the capability of removing your controllers, similar to how on the Nintendo Switch we do it. There's a little button on the back side right here. So you can see there's one here and one there. You can go through and click into this button and kind of take these controllers out. So you can click in and you can go through and slide these controllers out this way. So all we did was click into this button right here on the bottom. It's a little button right here. Click into it and it basically allows you to go through and there's a little like a notch right there. It allows you to take this controller right outside of it. So that's something that's really cool. The controller itself, you know, is pretty good feeling. It's built out of plastic. I was expecting it to feel more premium. It's not anything crazy though. And then whenever you're done, you can use it. You can set it as a different controller. And then if you want to plug it back in, you can slide it back just like any other controller, similar to the Nintendo Switch. You just find the compartment, you basically line it up, and you can basically just click it into place. So I'll try it one more time. I'll just click into place like this, and it should just click in. Hopefully, you have to click in the button. So for me, I had to basically slide it from the bottom to the top, and then it basically clicked into place. But that's that on the exterior. It's a very good looking type of console. And then you come into the actual gaming console itself. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind here. Number one, with the buttons surrounding it, these are your standard types of buttons, right? You have your D-pad, your ABXY buttons. There's nothing really out of the ordinary that you wouldn't have already expected. The only thing that's kind of big to remember here is number one, for the most part, when you are going through and using some designated buttons within the Legion Go, you have to remember that this top button is kind of the Legion software launcher. So this top button right up here, if you click on it, it will bring you into your Legion you know, software experience, basically. 
So this is where you can download a bunch of these games and play a bunch of games that's already pre-built in inside of your console because it's just a dedicated trigger button. Now again, you have to buy these games, you have to have an account, everything like that. But this is just a really easy way of kind of going through and kind of being able to immediately jump in and play your games by going through and clicking this button. So you can click on this button to open it and also click on it to hide it. You can do both from that particular situation. Now you have your buttons here. On the top right, there's also another button right up there, which is really cool to have. This button allows you to basically go through and have a bunch of different types of, you know, CPU knowledge of your particular device and just kind of system health for the most part. So from here, you can kind of go through and you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So within this software, you can see that there's a lot of cool stuff. You can go through and you can see your, you know, memory usage, you know, your battery life, your controller battery life as well. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. So kind of go through, I'd recommend just clicking into there, just kind of getting used to it because there is a lot of cool stuff that you can basically do there. And you also have a power button at the bottom as well. If you want to quickly just power off your console or anything like that, you can also do that as well. So there's some really cool stuff going on here. You also have your little bit of like a trackpad here as well, which is really cool. If you want to play some games at a, you know, corporate it, that's something that you can do as well. The biggest area though you're probably going to end up messing around with is this Legion Go button because it allows you to go ahead and build, you know, play a bunch of built-in games that you might already have. You can also find your library of games. If you click right over here, it's going to bring you into the games that you already own or that you've already downloaded. And you can click right into there and you can download these games and, you know, add different profiles here as well. You can also click on add game at the very top right here. And here you can go and log into a particular website and add a game from that particular page as well. So from there, you can go through, click whichever one you want. And then you can go there and use this particular page just like that as well. So you have the ability of kind of, kind of bringing in all of your games from all these other types of platforms into this particular page as well, which is something that's really, really cool. You can also click on settings right up here if you want to modify your settings. You know, you can see more of your system health in this particular page as well, which is another really cool thing as well as your fan speeds and everything. And this is something that's cool because yes, you can download Steam and stuff on this, but this kind of taps in right into your, like, your hardware and it gives you a much better type of experience of your type of device for the most part. Now, you can also click on controllers right up here if you wanna get more information on your controllers. You can see you can change out how your controllers are kind of you know, set up. You can also change out your joystick light. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can basically do here. You can see right here, I can go through and modify this and it does actually change my joystick light as I kind of modify it. So that is something that's actually super sick and having that type of capability natively built in is something that is so cool. Again, Legion made the hardware, Lenovo made the hardware. They also made the software, so they allow us to kind of you know, tinker around with those things as well. So at a high level, that's essentially how you use your Lenovo Legion Go, right? This thing has Windows 11 built in. So if you've ever used Windows 11 before, it's gonna be essentially the same process. The big thing you're going to have to remember though, is to update your you know, Legion Go whenever you get the chance to. So you can always click on the bottom Windows icon right over here, click into your settings option, not that settings. You wanna go into your standard settings, which is right there. You can always scroll down, click on a Windows update, you can always try updating your Windows PC, and that should end up helping you kind of get the most amount of you know, more recent features for your particular device. So in terms of that, that's basically how you use it. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then. Thank you.